They gave the B-52 nuclear bombs, but forgot to give it new engines. This bomber's biggest threat wasn't the enemy, it was its own engines catching fire mid-air. They call it the bomber that just won't die. But what if I told you the real reason the B-52 is still flying after 70 years isn't just because it's reliable, it's because the US Air Force got stuck with engines that were dangerously outdated, absurdly inefficient, and nearly impossible to maintain. In this video, we're peeling back the layers of one of the most iconic war machines in history to expose the truth behind its biggest weakness, the engines. We'll look at how a billion-dollar bomber got stuck with engines built before color TV was even a thing, how those engines almost caused catastrophic failures mid-air, and why, even today, this massive jet is flying with tech that should have been scrapped decades ago. And by the end, you'll understand how the B-52 didn't just survive the Cold War, it survived something much scarier – decades of bad decisions. Chapter 1. The Cold War Monster the B-52 Stratofortress wasn't built to look pretty. It was built to scare the hell out of the Soviet Union. Back in the early 1950s, when tensions between the US and the USSR were heating up faster than a reactor core, the Pentagon realized they needed something big, something long-range, something that could drop a nuclear bomb on Moscow and make it back home for dinner. That's where the B-52 came in, a massive, eight-engine flying fortress that looked more like a spaceship than an airplane. It could fly over 8,000 miles without refueling. It carried up to 70,000 pounds of bombs. And once it got off the ground, there was almost nothing on Earth that could stop it. But to make all of that possible, it needed power. A lot of power. The first B-52s were equipped with eight Pratt & Whitney J-57 turbojet engines, cutting edge at the time, but even back then, they were a compromise. These engines drank fuel like a frat boy at spring break, left massive smoke trails in the sky, and had a checklist so long it felt like assembling IKEA furniture, blindfolded. Still, the military didn't care. In their minds, this was a Cold War race, and speed beat sustainability. If the engines could last long enough to deliver the bomb, that was good enough. And for a while, it was. The B-52 flew missions over Vietnam, Korea, Iraq, and Afghanistan. It was always there, a symbol of American air power, big and loud and untouchable. But behind the scenes, the engines were becoming a ticking time bomb. The longer they stayed in service, the more things started to go wrong. Parts wore out, repairs got harder, fuel costs skyrocketed. And yet, the Air Force just kept patching them up and sending them back into the sky. Because retiring the B-52 wasn't an option. It was too useful, too iconic, too expensive to replace. But here's the part they don't tell you. Those engines weren't just outdated. They were dangerous. Chapter 2 the JT-3D Dilemma By the 1960s, the Air Force had a problem they couldn't ignore. The B-52's original J-57 turbojets were getting old, fast. They were loud, they smoked like chimneys, and they were so fuel-hungry that mid-air refueling became a routine part of nearly every long-range mission. It was like trying to drive a muscle car across the country with a leaking gas tank. So, in the early 80s, they made a move – upgrade the engines. The idea was simple swap out the old J-57s for something better. And at the time, the Pratt & Whitney JT-3D turbofan seemed like the perfect fit. It was more efficient, quieter, and already used on commercial airliners like the Boeing 707. Plus, it was cheap and available. But that's where the problem started. The JT-3Ds were civilian engines, not designed for the brutal pace and punishment of military combat readiness. These engines were never supposed to fly through rough weather at low altitude with 70,000 pounds of bombs strapped to their belly. They were built for smooth airline cruising, not Cold War war zones. So while the switch to the JT-3Ds did improve fuel efficiency, it also created new headaches. They required constant tweaking to work properly on a bomber like the B-52. They had trouble handling high-stress maneuvers, and worst of all, Parts were getting harder to find because airlines had already moved on to newer, more advanced engines. Imagine trying to keep a fleet of muscle cars running on parts from a 1970s junkyard. That's basically what Air Force mechanics were doing, and somehow they were pulling it off. But the truth is, the JT-3Ds were never meant to last this long, and the Air Force knew it. They just couldn't decide what to do next. Budget cuts, politics, and indecision meant the B-52 kept flying on borrowed time and that time was running out. Chapter 3. Engine Trouble in the Skies Let's get one thing straight. 
flying a B-52 was never a smooth ride. Pilots called it the buff, big, ugly, fat fella. But trust me, that's the version you can say in front of your grandma. It rumbled, it shook, and the cockpit looked like something out of a Cold War museum. But what really kept pilots sweating? The engines. There were eight of them, remember? That's eight chances for something to go wrong. And it did. A lot more than most people realize. There was the time in 2017 when a B-52 lost an engine during training over North Dakota. The entire engine, not just parts of it, literally fell off the wing. It dropped into an unpopulated area, but imagine what could have happened if that thing landed near a town. That wasn't a one-off, either. Over the years, there have been multiple cases of engine fires, flameouts, and complete shutdowns mid-flight. In some cases, the B-52 limped home with one or two engines completely offline, which it can do by design. But that doesn't make it safe. Here's one of the scariest moments. A B-52 crew flying a routine mission suddenly experienced four engines failing at once. That's half the power, gone in seconds. They managed to keep the plane in the air, but just barely. It could have been a catastrophe. And these weren't just bad luck. These engines were running long past their expected lifespan. Every flight was a gamble. Mayday, mayday. Engine number four just blew. If you're still in the air with us, subscribe. Because this flight into the B-52's dark truth, it's just getting started. Now, here's what's wild. Even after all this, there were no major changes. The Air Force patched up the engines, investigated the failures, and sent the planes right back into service. Why? Because there was no plan B. No new bomber ready to replace it. No green light for full re-engining. Just more duct tape, longer maintenance hours, and a whole lot of crossed fingers. And the people paying the price? The ground crews, the mechanics, the pilots? They were keeping a flying dinosaur alive. And it was only getting harder. Chapter 4. The Maintenance Nightmare If you think flying the B-52 was stressful, try fixing one. Behind every mission, there were teams of exhausted mechanics working brutal shifts just to keep those ancient engines running. They weren't just maintaining planes, they were babysitting time bombs. Each of the eight engines had its own quirks. Some would leak oil, others would overheat, and almost all of them needed constant tuning just to stay within safe operating limits. It wasn't just routine maintenance anymore, it was life support. And because the JT-3Ds were no longer used in commercial fleets, Finding replacement parts became like searching for treasure in a scrapyard. Some parts had to be reverse-engineered or salvaged from mothballed aircraft. Others were custom-made, which drove up costs and slowed everything down. It was like trying to keep an old flip phone alive in a world full of iPhones. Fuel efficiency? A joke. These engines guzzled fuel like crazy. It cost tens of thousands of dollars per hour just to keep a B-52 in the air. That made training flights expensive, deployment even worse and routine patrols a logistical headache. And then there's the environmental side. Those old engines belched smoke and pollution, so much that B-52s could literally be tracked from the ground just by their exhaust trails. Stealth? Not with those smokestacks. But the real burden was manpower. Crews spent more hours maintaining the B-52 than it spent flying. Mechanics had to be trained on systems that were older than their parents. And because so few people had experience with these engines, Keeping them mission-ready became a skill set that was both rare and irreplaceable. Still, the Air Force pressed on. Because every time the question came up, should we replace the engines? The answer was always the same. Maybe next year. So, the band-aids kept piling up. And with every flight, those engines got a little more tired, a little more unpredictable. It wasn't just unsustainable. It was dangerous. And yet, nothing changed. Why? Because the next problem wasn't in the hangar. It was in Washington. Chapter 5. Politics and Pentagon Delays The biggest enemy of the B-52's engines wasn't in the sky. It was buried deep in paperwork, politics, and Pentagon bureaucracy. By the early 2000s, it was obvious to everyone. These engines had to go. The Air Force floated ideas. Contractors submitted proposals. But somehow, year after year, nothing happened. Why? Because re the B-52 wasn't just a technical decision. It was a political nightmare. Boeing wanted to lead the upgrade. Rolls-Royce pushed their own engine design. GE stepped into the ring. Billions of dollars were on the table. Every contractor had lobbyists. Every congressman wanted the jobs to land in their district. It became less about fixing the B-52 and more about who got paid to fix it. Meanwhile, the Air Force was stuck playing referee. Every year, they asked for funding. Every year, Congress either delayed it, trimmed it, 
or redirected it to shinier, newer programs. The F-35, the next-gen bomber. Anything but the old dinosaur. Ironically, the bomber that never dies was held hostage by decision-makers who couldn't make a decision. So, while new stealth jets rolled out, the B-52 kept chugging along with engines designed when Elvis was topping the charts. And the longer they waited, the worse it got. Costs went up, maintenance got harder, crews got smaller. Eventually, the Air Force admitted it. Re-engining the B-52 would actually save money long-term. But getting that approved? That took decades. It wasn't until 2021, after almost 30 years of debates, that the Air Force finally made the call. But even then, it wasn't a clean break. Because once the contract was awarded, the hard part was just beginning. Chapter 6. The Re-Engine Revelation After nearly three decades of debates, dead ends, and delays, the Air Force finally pulled the trigger. In 2021, Rolls-Royce won the contract to re-engine the B-52 fleet with their F-130 turbofan engines, a modern, fuel-efficient design already used in other Air Force planes like the E-11 and C-37. It wasn't flashy, but it was reliable. And more importantly, it was available. For the first time since the Cold War, the B-52 was getting a real upgrade, not just duct tape and prayers. So, what's changing? The old eight-engine setup is staying but each ancient JT-3D will be replaced with a brand new F-130. These new engines will burn less fuel, require way less maintenance, and stay in service for decades. They're quieter, cleaner, and far more efficient. It's not just about performance, it's about money. With the new engines, the Air Force expects to save $10 billion in fuel and maintenance over the lifespan of the aircraft. That's a massive return on investment. But here's what's really wild. These upgrades are expected to keep the B-52 flying until at least 2050. Let that sink in. A bomber first flown in 1952 could still be dropping bombs in 2052. That's a 100-year lifespan for a military aircraft. It's completely unheard of. And it raises a bigger question. Why did it take so long? The technology was there, the need was obvious, and the cost savings were real. But bureaucracy, politics, and defense contracting red tape kept this project grounded for decades. Now that it's finally happening, it's a step in the right direction. But it's also a painful reminder of how slow the military machine can move, even when lives and billions of dollars are on the line. Still, the B-52 marches on, with new engines, a fresh lease on life, and no plans to retire. The bomber that wouldn't die? Looks like it's getting a second wind. Chapter 7 Conclusion and Summary The B-52 Stratofortress is a flying fossil, a machine born in the era of black-and-white TV, still dominating the skies in the age of smartphones and drones. But its survival hasn't been some clean, triumphant story of perfect engineering. It's been messy, complicated, and powered by engines that should have been scrapped decades ago. For years, those outdated power plants were the bomber's Achilles heel, loud, thirsty, and dangerously unreliable. Crews worked miracles just to keep the jets flight-ready, while decision-makers dragged their feet on a fix that was long overdue. The dark truth? The B-52 stayed in the air not because of its engines, but in spite of them. Now, with a long overdue upgrade finally in motion, the old warbird has a new future ahead, possibly flying missions for 100 years straight. That's a world record no one expected, and no one else can touch. It's a story of survival, stubbornness, and second chances. And it proves one thing. Sometimes, the biggest threat to military power isn't the enemy, it's indecision. The B-52's engines may be outdated, but your curiosity doesn't have to be. Hit play on the next video. There's plenty more flying under the radar.